the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. Today is Sunday, February 21st, 2021, and here's the update. So, in the mid-2000s, we were working on a Super Bowl commercial uh, with uh, Christina Aguilera actually did the um, script and everything, and Ace was uh, doing going to do the production work. It was centered around Back to Basics. At that time, she put out an album, Back to Basics, um, and it was really kind of a 1920s-themed uh, look and feel, and we were going to tie into that. Um, seems we got to that a little bit early. Um, I think that the Back to Basics theme is probably more appropriate now than it's ever been. And with this 100-year pandemic and looks like the economic uh, indicators are showing we're on the verge of a, of a really strong recovery if we get this vaccination system perfected. So my point here is that uh, I back to the 20s theme and uh, back to basics. I think that's something that we this country really needs to think through. Um, we've gotten caught up in a whole bunch of fantasy nonsense, and um, we don't build things anymore. Everything is about uh, quick returns, you know, creating currencies out of thin air, currencies in air quotes out of thin air. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you actually have to build things. Um, otherwise, you're just fooling yourself and setting up for a fall. I mean, if you're not farming, if you're not mining, if you're not manufacturing, if you're not actually producing things, if you're just playing shell games, um, there's no future in that. So back to basics. I think that's uh, that's appropriate here, that concept. So gambling, sports gambling specifically, will continue to advance in fits and starts until we show our first order, you know, the first full fundraise. Um, that's the keys to everything. That's the keys to bringing in this project after, um, you know, more than 15 years of hard work is to just um, bring in the first full fundraise and then publicize that through known techniques and known contacts. Uh, ben Franklin was not a lawyer. He did okay. Uh, the law is the law. Lawyers have nothing to do with that. Uh, that's you know, are we a nation of laws? Or are we a nation of men? If we're a nation of laws, it doesn't matter who the men are. So there have been multiple citations of our comments, uh, public comments, uh, regulatory comments, and incorporation into rulemaking. Um, and that's easily found if you do the research. And that was all done without the benefit of uh, a law firm. So uh, scratch that idea that you can't do these things without a lawyer. That's simply not true. Uh, gambler, gambling is for losers, and it also creates liars. Uh, I'm going to add on to this. Gambling is for losers, and it also creates liars. Because you have to lie to yourself before you can lie to other people, and I don't know a gambler who doesn't lie to themselves. The SPACs are uh, ticking up again. Again, SPAC is a shortcut. It's a shortcut. Longest distance between two points is a shortcut. There will be blowback. There has been, and there will continue to be on this format. It is an end run around the rules. Um, I'll just leave that there. So Crazy Horse, uh, I visited Crazy Horse in fall of 2019. And uh, that's a long cycle nonprofit. I won't go into the details there. I'm not trying to say it'll take us 60 years, years to get done with what we're doing here. But the point is, uh, you know, there is such thing as a, a mission that takes a while. And uh, that story behind Crazy Horse is pretty fascinating. Um, get into that if you have the time. But that's what dedication to an idea, sometimes this is what happens. Uh, there's uh, some talk about, lots of talk actually, about political engagement these days. It's definitely much higher than it's ever been in my lifetime. Uh, thanks mostly to the last, I would say, the last five or six years and, you know, the concept of the sports vote, the whole idea behind that, which is about uh, a decade old now, a little older than a decade, is that um, there's no solution in a person or a political party. Please hear that clearly. 
There is no solution in a person or a political party. There are ideas worth chasing, but vesting your hopes and dreams into an individual or to a group of individuals is a fool's errand. Uh, it's just, it's never going to work out. But the idea of investing in sports, specifically investing in sports performance, that's what, what the idea of the, behind the sports vote is, voting for sports investment, that is something that will make a difference and will build a better future and is the subject, one of the many subjects of the upcoming um, books that we're going to be publishing. So, uh, vote for sports. The big lie about ASM, and it's a big lie, uh, that it's a fraud and a scam. Uh, there have been a handful of very aggressive people who have done everything they possibly can and continue to, to try to derail this effort. Let me be absolutely clear about this. There has never been a single case, a single legal case, on the merits, not one single time that has made either of those claims into fact. Okay, We have never had a single trial of any sort in front of a jury. I'm going to say this again. There has never been a single case in front of a jury which is adjudicated that ASM is a fraud or that it's a Ponzi scheme or anything of the sort. It simply has not happened. Any other, any other claim is patently false and is probably serving some agenda, some agenda to create harm. Because anyone who is supposedly connected to this project as an investor or a stakeholder benefits not what, none whatsoever in making that statement. So, uh, you know, if and when that ever does happen, if, if and when there ever is an actual trial in front of 12 of my peers, and that they decide that that's uh, that this whole thing is a scam and a fraud and a Ponzi scheme is the day that it disappears off the face of the earth. So just leave that there. So crypto is going bananas. Um, you know, here's the thing. It, it, you're trying to get, there's a there's a very powerful group, several groups that are trying to advance this idea that it's a currency. Well, here's the problem with that. If you want it to be a currency, then it has to transact from front to back, meaning that you have to earn in that currency, you have to spend in that currency, and you basically have to live in that world. So where exactly does Bitcoin exist, or any of them for that matter? Where does it exist? Can you put one in my hand? Can you live in a Bitcoin? Can any of that happen? The answer is, of course, no. Are you going to live in the cloud? Are you going to live in the internet cloud? Because that's what will have to happen in order to make this work. And as a currency, it's lousy because it's completely unstable. How do you have price stability? People can hardly figure out how much money they have for their groceries that change from week to week, let alone fluctuations of 5 or 10% in a day. This is a bubble like nothing I've ever seen in the history of the world or even studied. And now, as of this writing... A trillion dollar Bitcoin cap market capitalization? Are you kidding me? I mean, there are thousands of cryptos out there. Thousands. Thousands of them. What separates one from another? You know, and, and there's more all the time. There's thousands of them with more being created all the time. So it's really a matter of market hype and attention and news coverage that creates one price move up over another. So it's a marketing game. He who markets the loudest and creates the most hype creates the highest price. That's insanity. I mean, it's... <laughs> okay, so so you have Bitcoin at fi almost, approaching $60,000 and then you have uh, Ripple at less than, um, I think, less than 50 cents at the moment. What's the difference between those two? I mean... I understand the claimed technical differences as applies to you, what it's particularly assigned to, its stated use, but that doesn't change the fact that it's a string of hex numbers. They're both a string of hex numbers. You can't put one in your hand. So what is it exactly, and what is its basis? So when claims are made like, well, how does that any different from a treasury bill? 
give me a break. Okay, in the case of any instrument I- issued by a nation state, particularly let's use the dollar as an example, the U.S. dollar represents the entire tangible and intangible asset base of the nation. We have thousands, tens of, actually, I don't know the number. It's huge. It's enormous. Millions of acres of public lands. You can start with that. You can start with the public lands, aircraft carriers, trade agreements. I mean, so if if you're going to tell me that Bitcoin is worth $57,000 a piece, what underlies this? What, where is that basis of value? Well, that's what somebody's willing to pay. That doesn't answer the question. That's not my question. My question is, what is the underlying value of it? And in the world of thousands of, uh, of, of options, thousands of different cryptocurrencies, it quite literally, I mean, someone else can come along and, and outmarket you, and then that money will flow out of your uh, currency, quote unquote, into the other. It's just, it's insanity. And I watched it literally from day one. It came alive in uh, uh, 2010, give or take. And I mean, I know parties that are deeply, I mean, part of the foundation of this. And when it was explained to me, my first question, and it's still the question I have to this day is, what happens when the miners are turned off? I understand the concept of the miners creating, you know, this math problem you have to solve. I mean, it. For, honestly, when I first heard about it, it sounded like a scam right from zero. Okay, so it's a math problem. All right, it's a math problem. That's what it is. Now, after all of that, mining, we, the, the network is supported by the miners. Well, not only are they, quote, creating new currency, but they're supporting the network. So no electricity, no miners, no currency. <laughs> and, and absolutely nobody has been able to, to uh, explain this away. It just devolves into a, uh, a conversation of nonsense and and a bunch of well you're not a true believer and you just don't get it and you know d- don't give me that shit I have a hundred and forty seven IQ I can understand a lot of things answer my question okay what is the basis of this thing and what happens when the power goes out so if you can't answer that I'm I'm not a buyer I'm not a buyer and I'm telling you it's only a matter of time before this house of cards comes crashing to the ground it's nothing but marketing hype. And it doesn't matter whether Elon Musk and Tesla, it doesn't matter who gets involved. It's all this, this is all just chasing the buck, okay? It's a bubble. It's a non productive asset bubble with no backing, a speculative toy like trading beanie babies, okay? It's not a currency, it's a beanie baby, green ones, blue ones, orange ones, red ones. My problem with this and why I care about it. Is that it is creating and uh, it's creating trouble and it's creating the potential for massive trouble in the financial markets. It's increasing the wealth gap and it's going to steal productive capital. It is stealing productive capital from the economy. We have people sleeping on the street and and who can't buy groceries and you have a fifty-seven thousand dollar series of hexadecimal numbers. That's not being traded mostly by those people by by the common man. That's all just Wall Street froth. Okay, so. You know, we are headed towards a Central America, third world country status if we keep doing stuff like this. And it's just, it's not stable. The price is not stable. Whether it goes straight up, straight down, what you need in a currency is stability. There, There is no stability here. Um, it's just, and it's a play for anarchy. It's a play against the system. It's a play uh, against stability. And that's not our game, Okay. And I go, it's Dutch tulips. Look that story up. The Dutch tulip, uh, some of the Dutch, the, the some of the tulips went up to three quarters in today's money, three three quarters of a million dollars a piece. So there's still room to run uh, in terms of how crazy Bitcoin can become because Dutch tulips went up to some of them went up to almost almost a million dollars a piece, almost a million dollars a piece for something you can plant in the ground and grow, and the whole market collapsed in a matter of weeks. However, all that being said, unlike some people, I don't root for people to lose money. So if you're playing this game, just be very, very careful because catching a falling knife, look at uh, what happened with GameStop. Okay, that's how quickly that stuff can come apart. So, you know, if you're out there mortgaging your house and, and borrowing money and doing crazy things, using your rent money for this, you're being, you're being pretty crazy, in my opinion. 
However, you know, if you can get in and get out uh, and make a buck off of it, more power to you. That's, again, I've said this many times, that's not my ethos. That's not what drives me. I, I don't live for cash. Uh, I'm on a mission here to make something happen. That's that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm committed to this. So you're comparing apples to oranges. I don't care how much money you make. It means nothing to me. I know plenty of rich people. I live in a neighborhood where if I just throw a rock out the window, I hit a million-dollar house. So that means nothing, okay? It means absolutely nothing. I'm concerned about what this is going to do to the broader economy and what it's going to do to society. So trade, make a profit, good luck, have a good time, be extraordinarily careful because when it starts to fall, it's going to fall like a rock. And maybe it goes to three quarters of a million, who knows? It's already well beyond where, where it should be. And even Elon Musk said the same thing. It's way high. Um, it's a minefield. So if you want to make even more money, uh, if that's your thing and you're a stakeholder in ASM, rather than trying to create damage, why don't you try to help us find the first order that we can finance and publicize so that that will pay off for you. And by the way, uh, this just came out this morning. Uh, Bitcoin uses more Bitcoin just by itself. Just the Bitcoin ecosystem uses more energy than all of Argentina. So the entire nation of Argentina doesn't use as much energy as Bitcoin. So no power, poof, gone. And. This entire crypto concept, and I said it to Sharon Brown, who's one of the inventors of our SRI product, who was just uh, recently um, the chief economist at the State Department. I told her uh, several years ago when I went to Washington that it's a direct threat to the nation state. So it's a direct threat to the nation state. Again, anarchy play. So XRP is, you know, for pennies, bit Bitcoin's the price of Mercedes. I There's no way... I. I want to understand. I want somebody to tell me something other than you just don't get it. You're not a true believer. Don't don't give me that crap. Okay. I work off of logic and reason. I want to hear the I want to understand the reasoning behind why these things are are so far separated. The SEC is trying to destroy XRP while allowing BTC to run to the to the moon. I mean, it, it makes no sense. Even and as I said, Elon said the price looks ridiculously high. So oh, and the the question of what can they do? Uh, you know, what can be done about this, like governments are powerless, don't kid yourself. All they have to do is tack on to a piece of must-pass legislation, like a funding bill for the military, for example, that if you exchange uh, dollars into any cryptocurrency, you're going to spend XX number of years in jail and or be fined YY uh, number of dollars. That's all. That's all it takes. A couple lines in a bill and wham. Uh, the entire force of the Justice Department will come down on anybody who trades in this. So don't 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 say that. They can wipe this out anytime they want through a couple of lines of text in a bill. They're watching it right now to see what it means and whether it provides any value. And that decision has not been made. However, if it's been de if it becomes determined that this is a threat, and I would tell anybody listening, it is a threat. OK, so if you're in government and you get a copy of this podcast, I'm telling you straight up, it is a direct threat to the sovereignty of the dollar. Uh, you know, <laughs> you'll see uh, if that decision comes down and a law is passed, it will crush this industry. Will it trade at the margins? Sure. Just like anything else, just like dope, uh, just like murder for hire. Sure, it'll trade in the darkness, but it's not going to trade in the light. So more uh, increased political engagement. Yes, more of that. I'm seeing discussion about direct democracy. Um, you know, that's got its issues. My only point of bringing this up here is that the top line uh, domain for the New Sports Economy website is mypoliticalpower.com. If you snoop around, you'll see that that's where it's hosted. And that was um, registered more than a decade ago. This goes back to political power through sports. Again, I there's a convergence here. I, I don't know how far off in the horizon it is, but I do believe that through uh, understanding how things work and maybe through some form of direct democracy, maybe we are headed that direction, that people will uh, have more say over their lives, basically political power through sports. So for the first time in more than a decade, I'm actually seeing that kind of chatter uh, in the public domain. So the New Jersey uh, Trump property was demolished. Gambling is for losers. I'll just leave that there. I don't know, if it was such a great project, it wouldn't be demolished. 
Uh, Facebook bans news uh, in Australia. Th- this is a very strange uh, thing taking place here. I think it's an overreaction. Uh, I don't think this is exactly the right move uh, going on here, but it is more of this uh, trying to get control over the public information space that has been corrupted by uh, false and misleading information and fake news and and distortions. Um, Texas football, Friday Night Lights. Okay, so in my um, period of time, the time when I was in Houston, my uh, oldest son was in football there. And I understand the attraction to this culture. And, you know, what I, what I want people to think about is, is being able to, to make that into something more accessible to everybody. Okay, so imagine being able to dream up a... Um, it look, I, I think that eSports is where we're going to find our first... Um, our first league fundraise. It just makes it makes so much sense right now because people are are not moving around like they used to. Um, they have their computers at home already. You know, putting together an esports league is an electronic process. So you you get a you get away from the problems with uh, COVID nineteen safety protocols and travel and all the rest of that. So we're really digging into this. Um, I see it as the most frictionless way to get from here to there is to to find a an esports league i think a startup uh you know do it from scratch find some star or stars that you know in that space you know that are already known players out there and approach them to uh form a league and then and fund it through our platform and publicize it uh you know it doesn't matter whether it's esports or sports it's going to accomplish the task we just need the news story so you know I can see the attraction to to sports. Okay, Texas, I think, is argu- arguably the uh, or inarguably, whichever way that goes, the most sports focused state in the country. So I spent you know uh, eight years there, eight years, um, and so I get it. You know, I what from two thousand eight until yeah seven years. So I understand that culture because I lived in it. So, you know, sports is pervasive. Everybody likes it. At least most people do. And being able to expand it and create new leagues everywhere, including esports leagues. Um, you know, I think that's a good future. You know, that's a good future. You're not going to do that with gambling. You're not going to build those things with gambling. <laughs> You're not going to build a league with a gambling uh, proposition. You're actually going to destroy a league with a gambling proposition. So anyway, that's um, that's I think that's if you put your head there, that's the big idea. OK, invest in sports and that's a, a better future for everybody. So there's an Arizona gambling bill that's uh, making its way through committee and looks like it's going to go up for at least a Senate side of the vote, state Senate side of the vote pretty soon where there's a direct tie to the ownership of the teams. Uh, you this is. This cannot be, okay? This is a recipe for corruption beyond corruption, okay? You can't have direct ties between the team owners and the and the gambling operators. That's insane, okay? Insane. And the I think the best chance of derailing this is going to be the um, the Indian uh, leagues. I'm sorry, the Indian um, faction there, the, because they control the gambling operations. When uh, I was in the computer business in, in Arizona in the 90s, I did a lot of business with the, the tribes there in Arizona, and they're a very powerful force. So I think that, and you're already seeing the resistance there, and I think that's where it's going to come from. But this is nuts. You, you can't tie those ownership, uh, mutual ownership between the gambling operators and the league, and the, the league owners or the team owners. That's insanity. Um, so there's a company called Ease that is uh, in the cannabis business, big, pretty big here in California. They're, uh, they've got a very big law, legal problem because they've been using the uh, banking system and the credit card networks to process um, cannabis deliveries. And uh, that's not allowed. Okay, as I, as I said in a prior podcast, the questions on the SBA loan documents that I filled out asked specifically about being involved in 
any uh, cannabis business, gambling business, or porn- pornographic business. This is a wire. Go back to the Wire Act. Okay, so what what the can this what the cannabis suit is not connected to the Wire Act, but it's the same basic concept, which is <clears throat> they're using national banks and interbank networks and credit card processors when cannabis is federally illegal. Okay, so back to the claim that the gambling operators are doing the same thing. Okay. They are moving money through the financial system to allow people to place bets through interbank networks, national banks, and there's that's not allowed. Okay, that is, if the the Wire Act specifically prohibits that. So, how do you pay for your bets with these gambling sites? Are you using your credit card? Are you using debit card? Because if you're doing anything short of physically handing them a bag of cash within state lines, okay within state lines, then you're break then the law's being broken. Period. There's no ifs, ands, buts, or maybes about it. Unless you are handing them a bag of cash inside state lines, then the law's being broken. So either we have laws or we don't have laws. That's the bottom line. Uh, and I I don't know yet. <laughs> it was it certainly didn't look like it for the last five years. We'll see what the next few years looks like. Um, When I was in the day trading, you know, doing some day trading in the late 90s, Ace and I actually met John DeLorean at his house in New Jersey, which is the Trump place now, uh, incredibly. Um, And when I was talking to him, him being John DeLorean, about stock trading, he said it sounded like gambling. (laughs) I I just remembered that a couple days ago. Uh, So that shows that, you know, this, this question mark about the stock market being just gambling, it's it's uh it's it's in the culture deep. Okay, this is something that we're gonna have to fight. It's something that we've fought before. You know, it's a complex question in the details, but at the core, it's not. Okay, and why? Because the principal purpose of the stock market is not to speculate. The the principal purpose of the stock markets are capital formation, which is the same thing that we're about, meaning that accessing capital and putting it to use, okay? So when a company IPOs, it's not to put its stock on the market to turn it into gambling chips. It's to form capital for useful purposes. So that's, if you want to start with a, what's the difference, that's the difference. In the same way, you're not going to be able to create a sports league by gambling contracts on it. You know, in our case, you will be able to create a sports league or an esports league by selling contracts on on investing in the sports performance of that league. So that's the main difference. So DraftKings is going to be reporting their non-earnings late this week. Uh, They're not going to make a dime. Nobody, no, they're, the loss is still going to be there. I think they're going to miss by 50%. That's my, uh, that's my, my guess is they're going to miss by 50%, meaning they're going to lose 50% more than what is being claimed. I'll be surprised if it's not the case, if it's, if anything else is reported, I would I'm going to dig deeper into the financials because I don't see the numbers there. I I know the state of the economy. I know what people are um, spending their discretionary income on. And if you're trying to tell me that uh, Joe Q Public is could just couldn't wait to place a bet on the Super Bowl, uh, I call bullshit on that uh, because it's just not there. I can see patterns of behavior within all sports market that I've never seen before that tell me uh, that. Things are very, very strained out there, extremely strained. I mean, like never before. So uh, it's just not the case. So I would I would offer as a, as a counter to that, how about an enterprise that makes money from the first day? Okay, that's what we've got here. All we need to do is find one single league, whether it be esports or regular sports, uh, that we can finance. We'll do complete visibility on this and transparency. No games. I don't even care if uh, if the monies are controlled by a third party, whatever it takes, just to get the story, then uh, that will turn the cameras our direction. Uh, the world will say, what is this thing? And off to the races. And this system will make money from day one. And again, I think the esports sector is the most likely place to find that candidate because it just it's the least amount of friction. It doesn't require people to move around. It doesn't require you to have a stadium where you have to deal with coronavirus restrictions and all that. 
And really, it, it comes down to finding players out there that are known. You know, if we find someone who's known in that space, basically a star, they kind of come in with their own built-in social media following and and basically the startup of the market is is already there they just bring their fans right so uh we're really getting into the criteria details of that like what what do we need to require from that candidate to to put them up because the other side of it is we want it to be the least amount of friction possible but we also don't want it to fail or have or turn into a scandal we can't have that because that would be deadly we need to make sure that you know, it's a success and that it works all the way around for everybody. So that's where we're at. That's where we're, uh, that's the, you know, setting those criteria is what we're working on now. So finally, um, if you find this, uh, well, l one final comment at the, uh, in the notes, in the show notes at the bottom, the, uh, the final link in the, in the list is to the ASM league partners intake form. So if you want to uh, be considered as a candidate for that first fundraise I'm discussing here, please complete that intake form. It's the final link in the list in the show notes. Uh, and if you find this show uh, interesting or helpful or you know somebody that maybe has been away from ASM for a while, please forward it, uh, you know, refer it around to anybody you think might, might find it interesting. Uh, review it, review it honestly and, you know, rate it honestly. And if you want to be notified, subscribe. So thank you for your time, and please do stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.